So a lot of people argue about what was the golden era of the AHL, and for me, it was the 1970s when this team and several others dominated uh, what I consider the best minor league uh, in pro hockey history. Now, the Cincinnati Swords played at the old Cincinnati Gardens in Cincinnati, Ohio from 1971 to 74. Now, they were owned and were the minor league affiliate of the new Buffalo Sabres of the NHL. Now, the majority of the players on the squad were what you call, uh, I, uh, well, you can't say they were pure baby bulls. They weren't Birmingham bulls, but they were very uh, young players. Eventually became the youngest team in Calder Cup history, by my knowledge, to win uh, the playoff title. Now, they were founded in 1971 when the newly created Sabres exercised their option, which was part of their purchase price for the franchise, to create their own AHL farm team to replace the team before us out of the AHL, the Buffalo Bisons. Now, the Sabres had wished to place the team in South Florida, but the AHL balked because the team there would have effectively been isolated from the rest of the league, as their nearest rivals would have been the Tidewater Wings, over 500 miles away. Furthermore, the only sizable sports arena in the region, the Hollywood Sportatorium, had severe structural flaws that made it unsuitable as a professional sports venue. The Sabres then proposed to base the team in Cincinnati. Eventually, the team moved to Florida when the cross tire state rival Cleveland Barons moved to Jacksonville in 1973. Now, Although they were in existence for only three years, the Swords were immensely popular with Cincinnati fans, and again, the skaters became hometown heroes amongst the youth and the uh, what they call the veteran guard of hockey fans in, in that part of Ohio. Now, they qualified for the playoffs in their first season and then swept the Hershey Bears uh, and lost to the Baltimore Clippers in the second round. Now, in 73, the Swords broke numerous AHL records, including most points in the season with 113, most wins in a year, 54, most home wins with 32, most road wins with 22, most points at home with 65, and most points in road games, 48. They outscored their opponents 351, 206. Now, after a sweep of the Richmond Robins and a 4-1 series win over the Virginia Wings in the first and second rounds of the postseason, the Swords defeated the defending league champions, Montreal Canadiens' top farm team, the Nova Scotia Voyagers, to win the Calder Cup. Now, they became one of the youngest AHL teams, again, uh, on average, in my opinion, they are where they were that, to take the title. Now, you got to understand, the Montreal Canadiens had about 20 uh, former and future NHLers, including Larry Robinson, Steve Schott, uh, uh, the goalies were strong, but in the Rock, Wayne Thomas. So for Montreal's farm team to lose to a nouveau uh, squad was quite the upset. Now in their third season, trying to defend their title, uh, they lost to the eventual Calder Cup champs, the legendary Hershey Bears, 4-1 in their series. Now, in 1974, when Cincinnati was granted an expansion franchise in WHA, we called the Cincinnati Stingers, probably one of the most popular major pro teams in Cincinnati history, they started the uh, play in 76, and despite the sword's popularity, the Sabres were not willing to compete with a WHA team and folded the swords out after the 74 season. Now, there was some good news as years later, the Sabres once again established a farm team relationship with the Cincinnati hockey squad as they, uh, they became affiliated with the ECHL's, again, very popular Cincinnati Cyclones. Again, uh, a beautiful uh, legacy for hockey in Cincinnati. Now, regular season statistics for the Swords. First season, 30, 28, and 18. Third in the West Division, uh, minus six goals, four goals against. 1973, 54, 17, and five, uh, plus 
145, first in the West Division, 74, 40, 25, and 11, plus 40, and third in the South Division. I don't know how you could be third place with 40 wins, but a very strong league at the time. 71, uh, 72 playoffs, defeated Hershey 4 0, losing to Baltimore 4 2. 73, bet Richmond 4 0, Virginia 4 2, and Nova Scotia 4 1. So do you won 66 regular season and playoff games that year. Tremendous. And 74 lost in five games to Hershey. So uh, the level of popularity of Cincinnati swords, swords live on. It was kind of bizarre. I was on a uh, uh, alumni site for the uh, Rhode Island Reds the other day and some of the uh, posters never heard of the swords. I heard about the swords because for years the Canadian Montreal Canadian announcers would bring up the fact that the Cincinnati players that defeated Nova Scotia in 73 were still in the league, especially the great uh, Rick Dudley, who's uh, been a, a coach after retirement, and of course for the Montreal Canadiens. But that Buffalo team uh, in 75, it's all linked to uh, that great Swords team because uh, the player development they had in 73 led to the Stanley Cup appearance in 75 there's no doubt so ladies and gentlemen if you like what we're doing here with our vintage sports file podcast please let us know give us a like comment and subscribe we passed a quarter million hits on the channel uh just recently with 510 subscribers again doesn't sound like much does it but again no monetization no promotion there's no ads it's ad free no one is telling me what to post or not post so it's a pure democratic total so every time you come here you're basically saying i don't want filler i just want the bare facts and you gotta understand ladies and gentlemen if we don't talk about the history of the nhl we don't respect the fact the players that built the foundation what i consider the the most important league in world history in my simple opinion have a good day bye